All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Monica. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. The the one with the Transmart. Um, yep. Page. And they use, yes. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Good. Just Thanks. a quick side note: If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the um, question box, and I will um, I will get Monica's attention then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today's session, I'm going over the data curation to prepare your data to load into Transmart. And we will do the loading using the Transmart data loader. So this is a ETL tool that was developed by Clarivate Analytics uh, that will enable an easy way to load your data into Transmart. In terms of agenda, I'll start by giving a brief demonstration and uh, introduction of the TM data loader, so the ETL tool. Uh, but I'll also show you what are the guidelines for, for data curation, focusing on clinical data, but also discussing briefly the loading of high dimensional data using gene expression as an example. Um, there are other training sessions available on the YouTube channel for the uh, Transmart Foundation that will show you into more detail the loading of high dimensional data. So I recommend you to watch those recordings as well if you want to find more about this topic. Um, I will also show you how to load studies metadata to enable the use of the Browse tab and how to upload uh, files into the, this tab. This slide deck will be available on the Transmart Foundation page, and you can use it as a guide on how to load data and includes a step-by-step -step example of data curation and loading using a, a geo study. So let's move into the, the actual demo. So I'll move from the, the slide deck. Um, so, I will load into a uh, venture bioscience test instance, the Transmart test instance. And for our demo, we will load a, a test study into this instance. As you can see on the Transmart instance, we have different folders in here. And on our test studies, we only have one study, so we're test study 001. And I'll show you how to load a study into this folder. To be able to load studies into a remote Transmart instance, as this case, you will need to be able to move the curated files into your server. And you can do this using a tool such as WinSCP. So let me open it here. Um, so actually, this is a free um, FTP client for Windows, and it will allow you to copy files between a local computer and remote servers. First, you, you will need to set up the connection um, to your uh, server. So you will need to know the host, the port, the username and password. And uh, once you have that set up, you can connect to your server. Once you connect to your server, you will be directed into your server folders. So in my case, I have a, a Transmart folder here, and I also have um, a folder that contains my ETL data to be uploaded. Uh, sorry, uh, this one. And uh, on the left, it's actually my, my local environment, so my, my laptop. So this way you can easily move files from your local instance to your Transmart instance, uh, just doing a uh, drag and drop. So you just have to do this. So in this case here, uh, I have a folder that is called test studies. And it has already uh, one study that was loaded and we've seen on my test instance that was called test 001. And it has the prefix of done because this 
um, data was already loaded. But we can see here another folder called tax test 002 that we want to, to load. Inside this folder, we will find uh, clinical data to upload. So this subfolder contains multiple clinical data folders and also a, a mapping file. So to be able to load this study, we actually have to run um, a PuTTY ex extension. So this here, open session so that you can connect to your server. So to connect, you might need a, a password for your server. I'm going to enter mine. So I'm connected and now I need to access the folder that contains my ETL2. In my case, this is the TM data loader folder. And once I'm here, I can actually run the ETL tool, and this is just one line. So in this case, I'm, I'm running the ETL tool, so the tm underscore ETL dot jar. I'm using different options. One of them is the dash uh, I. So this is to run the ETL tool in the interactive mode, and this will allow me to see uh, what the actual what the ETL tool is actually doing. So it would output uh, all the steps that are being performed by this tool. So this is as easy as just running this command, entering the command, and it's going to start running. So actually it was very fast because this is a very small um, data set uh, with only low dimensional data, so no high dimensional data. So it, it runs really, really fast. So now if I uh, go back to my server folder, to my test studies, and I refresh this page, we can actually see that the folder was renamed to done. And my clinical data upload subfolder was also re, uh, renamed to done. If we go back to my Transmart instance, and if I refresh the page, now I will find my second test study in here containing all the data. Also, in here, you can see that the a message that says that the procedure was completely successfully. So I would say that this is the easy part, where you just have to run a command to have your data into Transmart. Um, the more complex or more time consuming um, phase of the curation and loading process is actually the curation. So preparing your source data into a format that is recognized by the ETL tool, um, cleaning the data, harmonizing it, and having everything ready so that it shows um, nicely on your Transmart instance. Um, you can also use the ETL tool to delete the, um, the studies. I can show you how you can do that. You have two options, either delete by study ID or by uh, study path. In this case, I'm going to delete by study ID. If you don't know uh, what is the study ID, for instance, for this one, you have several ways to do it. Either you go to your um, source loading files so let's go in here and open one of them and you'll see that the first column is the study id and the study id in this case is gsc0 tag alternatively if you don't have access to these files you can also go to your transmart instance select your study and move into the grid view. And under the trial column, you will have your um, study ID. So the same one, GSC, zero tag. 
So with this, I can just run my um, delete command. So this is also a very simple command. Um, so I'm calling here my ETL tool, also in the interactive mode, so I see what is happening. And with the option delete study by ID and my study ID. So let's run it. So it will give me some, some feedback on what it's doing. If it takes too much time, we'll come. No, it was fast. So uh, procedure was completely successfully. So if we come back to our Transmart user interface and refresh this pa page, we will see that the study disappear from uh, my instance. So let's go back to our slide deck. And actually talk to you a little bit more about the um, Transmart data loader and how to prepare data so that you're in that point where you just have to run a simple command to enter data into your instance. So the Transmart uh, data load loader is actually quite flexible and supports multiple mapping options. And your original data files or your um, source files can actually be used with minimal manipulation to load data into Transmart, and this will improve data integrity. You can also find more about the ETL tool on the ETL wiki, uh, which is a quite comprehensive um, resource. And it's quite useful. And you'll find more advanced options there, curation templates, some examples of data, and other relevant information. So you just have to follow this link in here. So to have the data ready to be loaded, um, the loading files should be organized as follows. As we saw during the demo, we need a main folder. Um, that will contain all the other subfolders and the files pertaining to that study or data set. So as, as a guideline, this folder should allow uh, easy identification of the study or data set, and you should set standards and guidelines to name your folders. For instance, um, in this screenshot, we can see a public geo study, and you can use the disease being studied, the author and the geo ID, so disease breath breast cancer, the author ATSIS, and the GOID GSE 25066. And this will allow to identify this study um, very easily. So inside of this main folder, you will find this sub, two subfolders, the clinical data to upload, that contains the clinical um, data file and also the mapping file that will link the, the subject ID to um, the different variable values. Then inside of the expression data to upload subfolder, you will find your gene expression data, the mapping file that will map sample IDs with subject IDs, and in this case, also, you'll find the, the platform file. So the, plat the, the file that annotates your, your platform. So the probes versus gene IDs. So each study can be, uh, be placed in, in asset folders on the ETL directory according to the desired study path. We saw in the example before that we had here four different main folders and inside these folders we have our stat test studies we have our public studies and once you run your etl tool on your transmart instance you will find the exactly same folder st structure you'll find here the test studies public studies um, and within each one of this you'll find all your loaded studies <clears throat> uh, 
So once you have your files organized that way on the server, you can run the ETL tool as I demonstrated earlier. So you can either run uh, the command without any option. So this is the first line in here. If you want to see what are the available options, you can run the command and dash dash H it, and it will show you all the available options. To delete a study, as I've also shown you before, you have the delete a study by ID and you'll put in front of it the ID of your study or you can delete by path. So in this case, you will insert the full path of your study. You can also use the ETL tool to move a study between different folders in case you, you've loaded into um, a folder and now you need it uh, under a different folder or you made a mistake, instead of deleting, you can actually move the entire study. Once the ETL tool finishes running, um, if the procedure runs successfully, the name of the study and the, the subfolders changes to include the prefix done, as you've seen. But if something goes wrong and the data is not loaded, the name will include the prefix fa failed. Um, if imagine that you move the, the files into the server because they are ready, but maybe they are not all ready or you don't wish to load um, next time you run your ETL tool, you can add the prefix disabled. So you can um, safely run your ETL tool and the ETL tool will not load the folders that are flagged with the disabled tag. Um, I would like to highlight some of the ETL options, such as the interactive mode, so that you can see what is going on while you, your tool is running. You also have the check duplicates, so you can see if on your clinical data you've included duplicates. For instance, if you're trying to upload the same subject and the same variable twice, if this happens, the ETL tool fails. But if you don't have this option, you don't know where it's failing. So if you actually run using this check duplicates option, it's going to list um, the, the records that, that are failing. So you also have other options, for instance, not renaming the folders when it's when the loading fails. This can be quite useful when you're testing and troubleshooting and the loading, the loading keeps failing and you don't want to keep renaming the folder so you can enable this option. Um, you can also stop the ETL when it fails, so you don't have to wait until the end of the ETL um, run to, to finish it. So you can straight, go straight away to correct uh, the problem. You have also this option of allow non-unique columns. So this, by default, the ETL tool doesn't allow you to load files that have columns with the same name. This is actually a quality control uh, measure, but sometimes you copy paste a column because you use it to uh, clean your data or something like that or to manipulate your data and you didn't change the column name. And if you didn't change and you, if you use the default behavior, the ETL tool is not going to load your data. So to uh, prevent this, you can actually allow non-unique column names. There's also options about the visit names and I'll go into that a little bit uh, later. So as you saw during the, the brief demonstration, you have to use a FTP client to access your server and to connect to your server. You will need to transfer the files to be uploaded on to, into your Transmart ETL directory um, and open your PuTTY session to, to run your ETL commands. So actually you should uh, run using the no hub um, option because if you close your PuTTY session window without this option, it will make the ETL procedure stop. 
But if you run with this option, even if the, the window is closed or uh, if your computer crashes or if you're loading really heavy data sets that are running overnight and you don't want to babysit the process, this will actually uh, make the process running even if you're not monitoring and you can always come back to it uh, later and tail the, um, the process to see what, what is ho happening and you tail using uh, this command here. Um, so as you saw before, when we were running the, the ETL using the interactive mode, we saw uh, a bunch of lines running. Uh, that's the output of, of the ETL. So I would like to actually uh, highlight some useful information. Um, so you can see that when we were running before, this is actually a screenshot of the, the run that we did previously. We see that DTL actually found a study because there was a folder with, that didn't have any prefix. And that study, it's called text test 002. It has a, a clinical data folder. And inside that folder, it has a, a mapping file and it has multiple clinical data files. So the TST001, it has 12 rows and it's reading those rows um, and it's, it's fine. But when it gets to the TST demo, it actually throws some warning uh, messages. But it doesn't stop because these are just warning messages. I'm sorry. And it's just saying that there are some missing values for columns. That they are empty. So this could be fine. Maybe you're missing some variables for some subjects. So it's just letting you know that. <coughs> for the other files, it also gives you some error message of missing values, but the other ones run fine. So once it reads all your files and it doesn't find any uh, major issue, it moves into actually running the store procedures. So in this case, the load clinical data. <coughs> I would like to highlight a few things that you should keep your eye on when loading clinical data. The procedure is going to set single visit names to null if for a certain variable you only have one visit name, for instance, baseline or follow-up or day one. So in this case, the procedure is going to drop the visit name. So if you want to override this behavior, you should use an available ETL tool. Also, um, <clears throat> if the data label, the visit name and data value are not explicitly defined on the mapping file, the ETL tool is actually going to add them to the um, variable path. It's also going to check for duplicates on key columns. Once the run is successful, it shows here, and you can see that it, it finished and everything went fine. <coughs> Um, but in case you have some problems in your files, I would like to show you how you can troubleshoot using the messages that appear on um, your, your output. So in this case, it found it, the, um, the test two. It found the clinical data, what's connecting to the server. It read the mapping file. But when started to read the clinical data files, actually could not read them. So it's saying column index is out of bounds. And this happened because I've downloaded the wrong file. So I downloaded it as a HTML file. So the ETL tool was not identifying, recognizing the format. So it's telling me that there's a problem with this file. 
And because it fails before uh, starting to run the store procedure, actually is not going to rename the folders or not going to give me any uh, error message, but just shows me a bunch of Java errors. So this means that it failed before running the store procedure and I actually have a problem with my file structure or format. So I need to go back and check what is the problem with my files. So in this case, it's with the test demo file, so I can just replace this file and try to run it again. So I'll stop here. Uh, anyone has any questions? No? Okay, so I'll, I'll move forward and I'll show you how to prepare data files to be able to use the ETL tool. So I'll give you some data curation guidelines. Uh, so what is our goal with data curation for Transmart? Uh, we need to organize our source data, for example, a, a geo study, but could be also an internal research data. And we want to organize it uh, into a hierarchical tree structure where we group and list all our variables available. We can use the Transmart variable navigation tree to build queries. So to select our patient cohorts, to explore um, the data and to run the analysis. In, in Transmart, you do this by dragging and dropping your variables into the comparison window boxes. So, and you have three different types of variables and they are identified by the three different icons. So the DNA elix for high dimensional data, the ABC for categorical variables and one, two, three for numerical variables. These two are low dimensional data. Um, so we need to think how we want to load and how we want to organize our data because this is going to affect how we build our cohorts, how we build our queries. There isn't a right or wrong way to do it, uh, but we need to make sure that our tree organization reflects our study design and supports our use cases. So you need to define how you want to store your data and how you want to work with it. Sometimes you may even want to load your data in different ways to allow flexible and easy data querying. Um, in Transmart, uh, variables are identified by their full path name. This means the folder, subfolder, um, and node name. So you, we can see here two examples. Um, Normally and intuitively, we would think as sex as one variable, but in Transmart, we will actually have two variables. So the sex female and sex male, and each one of this is identified by the full path name, not only by, by sex, uh, but by everything that is um, stated here. Um, also, something that is very important is a combination of subject ID and full path name needs, needs to be unique. So, um, for example, a patient might have multiple treatments, but each treatment will be considered a unique variable. Uh, but for, his, for example, if I'm measuring the temperature of a patient, um, I might take several measurements to be able and but to be able to store this data into Transmart, I have to be able to distinguish between the multiple measurements. And I could do this by adding a visit name or a time point or a measurement number into the variable uh, name or full path. So here are the, the visit names. Um, and this will actually be part of the variable path. Um, if the measurements are technical duplicates, maybe you should think if you actually want to load the multiple measurements 
and before loading into Transmart, maybe it would be better to actually average the values and load only the average into Transmart. But if you actually want to keep all your replicates, um, you need to create an extra node, for instance, measurement one, measurement two, on your tree to be able to uh, load um, these multiple values into the same variable for the same patient. <clears throat> to, to load clinical data, um, you need to define uh, the study ID and subject ID to link the variable to a specific study and a specific subject. So um, these two are always required, but optionally you can define um, the visit name and data label. And this is to allow you to have um, more complex um, data structure organization as we saw on the previous slide it will allow you multiple time points and multiple endpoints uh, so usually you use this for more more complex uh, studies and, and data sets Transmart also offers the ability of using control terminologies to plot automatically uh, the age, the sex, and the race into the summary statistics window. So do not name them differently from this uh, if you want them to show up automatically on the summary statistics window. So for instance, for, for uh, sex, don't name that a variable as gender, or it will not show up on the summary statistics uh, automatically. Uh, the same for age, don't put age uh, parentheses years, because that way Transmart will not recognize it. <clears throat> so let's go step by step on how would you um, curate a, a study and I'll give you an example using a, a geo study. So you first you will go to your geo page and you'll see which information is available there. And you can also go on and read any available articles or supplementary files to understand your data. It's important to have a good definition of your variables um, so that you can harmonize different studies. So if you have variables that are present in different studies, but they are called differently, you should actually try to harmonize them and uh, call them the same, even though in the original data source, they are assigned to different terms. Um, so in, in this case, let's go into the, the geos, geo page. So this one here, so GSC 25066 you would get your data. And where do you get your data? You get it from here, series matrix file. So you can just download this. And once you download, you just have to open your file and unzip it. Once you do that, you will you can open it, for instance, using Excel, and you'll see something similar to what we have here. So the beginning of the file usually contains the metadata, and you can use this for your metadata curation for your study level data. Uh, but the actual the actual subject level data starts here, so where it says sample title. And we have a matrix here of variables versus, versus samples or uh, subjects. And in, in Transmart, for, for the um, ETL tool, is actually expecting the other way around. So actually is expecting subjects of one different subject for each row and one different um, variable for each column. So the first step of data curation would be to transpose this matrix. So we, you would copy paste this into a new uh, file by transposing. Um, so once you do that, you transpose your data 
you can actually start manipulating it. And the, the first um, alteration would be to add your study ID as of the first column. So for GeoStudy, we usually use the um, Geo ID, so the GSC 25066. Um, and then you can start renaming your variables. For instance, the um, sample geo accession. So here, sample geo accession. So your sample names, you could actually rename them as subject ID. And you can start uh, cleaning and standardizing your variables, for instance, um, change coded variables into human readable format. You can also omit certain columns that are either duplicate or you're not interested in loading into Transmart. But once your um, data file is ready, it should look something like this. Um, and it will be ready to be loaded. So other considerations, so as I said, you should start by uh, having a first column called study ID. Um, you should have a unique um, data row per combination of uh, subject, visit name, data label. Um, and for more complex data sets, you can also use the, the tag option. I will show you a, a little bit later on how to use it, but you can also find more advanced options and other considerations on the TM Data Loader Wiki. Once your file is ready, you should um, save it as tab delimited text file. So how do you define how your clinical data will be displayed in Transmart on the, your navigation tree? So this is the goal of your clinical mapping file. The, um, so your category CD will be defining the path of the variables. So your folders and subfolders are separated by the plus sign. So in this case, we can see that a folder called subjects with a folder called demographics has a variable called age. So this is reflected here on our tree. So the, um, the column D, so data label, is actually my um, variable name. And my column number, it's the column number on my clinical data file. So if we go back to our um, clinical data file that we prepared before, we will find the first column as my study ID, my second column as my subject ID. I don't want to load my third and fourth column, but I want to load my fifth column as my disease. So let's go back. So, and here we have the first column, study ID. Second one, the subject ID. I don't want to load uh, this one. I don't want to load the age, but I want to load my fifth column as my disease. Um, <clears throat> the first column on my mapping file is actually the file um, name that we are mapping. And one mapping file can be used to map multiple clinical data files. So if you have really large clinical data sets, for, for, for instance, a clinical trial, you might have your data organized under different files. Um, one for uh, medical history, another for clinical variables, another one for medications, and you don't need to merge all these files, you can keep them separate, and then you can have just one mapping file to map them all. Um, if using the visit, in case you have multiple time points for your variables, um, so variables that were recorded across multiple visits, baseline, day one, day three, you have options either to specify explicitly where you want the visit name to show up on your path, 
and you'll do that by specifying on your mapping file or you can do this uh, via the ETL tool. So by default, the ETL tool would add the visit name as the last, last um, element of your path. So for instance, in this case, um, you could have something like clinical data folder, then you have your clinical endpoints uh, subfolder, the response, yes, and um, that was registered at week eight. And this is the default behavior. But you might want you might want to do it differently depending on your use cases and the design of your study. And if you want, either you specify it on your mapping file this way, or you use um, the ETL tool called visit name first and it will switch the visit name from last element of the, the path to um, sorry the element just before so in this case you'll have response then week eight and then yes so this means that within your response folder you will see um, all your different visits and then for each visit you will have your um, response phrase in this case yes or no you can also um, use more advanced path building using uh, the tags and I'll show you that um, in some slides. <clears throat> so for, for advanced options, you have the data labels, you have the visits, you have uh, the tags and the determination. You also have validation and summary statistic options and these are very good for um, quality control. And you also have some options for updating your study, so um, the merge modes, and I'll guide you through this in the next slides. So in terms of data labels, visits and tags, um, imagine that you have a clinical file that looks something like this. So each patient uh, went to the hospital during different periods, so baseline and maintenance. And for each period, uh, you could have several visits. So during maintenance, the patients went at day 10, day 20, and then 30 to the hospital. And you actually could collect some endpoints um, at different time points before and after a certain drug. So um, the time point zero hours or two hours after the administration of a drug then you would have <clears throat> different handpoints and the response values. So how do you make sure that you have just a unique variable for uh, this patient, taking in consideration that for endpoint it was collected at different periods, different visits and different time points. So you can do this using the tags. So your mapping file would look something like this. Um, you have your first column, study ID, second subject ID, but you will use your period as your tag one. And um, the fourth is your visit name. And your fifth, your time point is actually your tag two then you'll use column six so the endpoint name as your data label and what you're actually trying to load is the um, endpoint response so if it was low or high so on your mapping file um, your path would be clinical data the endpoints and then data label so which endpoint are you referring to for which period, uh, for which visit, and which um, time point. And this backslash six is telling you that you want to use the data label defined on column six. So <clears throat> another example, you can also use uh, a data label to 
name multiple variables. In this case, I'm using column mutation, this one here, as my data label. <coughs> and as you can see in here, my fifth column, six, seven, and eight. So the mutant allele genomic, um, mutant allele cDNA, the mutation type and variant type are actually going to have on their variable path the mutation name here. So it's saying here backslash column four to use as my, my data label. And this is how it would look like on the Transmart tree. You can also use your study ID on your path, and you can do this by adding the dollar dollar sign and study ID. So in this case, um, I'm highlighting here in, in blue that I'm using my study ID here, the GSE zero tag on my path. So it's going to show up as my upper folder. And I'm also using tag two and tag to build my path. So and tag two, um, it, they will show here, tag one and tag two. And I can also use the um, actually the, the values on on my um, file to build my folder names. In this case, I'm using um, tag underscore tag and dollar dollar sign language to build my folder name. So in this case, I have tag one and this Spain language, tag two, and English language. For the validation and um, summary statistics, so this is very useful for quality control, you can actually define on your mapping file some rules. So when you're loading your data, the ETL tool is going to assess if your data is following the rules that you specify. So as an example, for age, we define here a bunch of different rules. So we are saying that age is a numerical variable and it's required, it should be greater than 30. Um, and when sex sorry, should be greater than 30 when sex is equal to male, should be less than 50 uh, otherwise. So should be greater than or equal to 20, uh, lesser than or equal to 20. So uh, different rules, of course, in this case doesn't um, make much sense. This is just an example, uh, but you can define multiple rules for just one variable. In case of the variable sex, uh, we are saying that is a categorical variable and it's required. So if we try to load a clinical data file that looks like this, we will see that it's going to fail uh, or is going to show us that in terms of quality control, we have some values that don't uh, meet the criteria defined on the validation rules. Um, and it also says, uh, which ones are failing. So it's a listing that uh, it failed for above 30 for this subjects. Um, and because we specify also it was required, it also tell us um, that in, in this case, we have two missing values for the sex and for this patients here and also lists on the summary statistics, um, several helpful um, statistics as um, the, the count, for instance, in this case, we have five females, two males, and if it's a numerical variable, it will show us the mean, the median, minimum and maximum, and standard deviation. So you can always uh, use the, the summary statistics output file. So this is a file that actually um, is created on your clinical data to upload folder. 
So if we go here to the server, to the study that we loaded before, um, let's refresh this, sorry. I need to refresh because it was we uh, loaded before. So the name changed. And we can see here our summary statistics file. Um, and here we are seeing uh, which um, patients fail our validation. And we can see also some more information on our data. There are also several app options if you want to uh, up, update data that you already loaded into Transmart. So imagine that you have a study that you already loaded into Transmart and either you have an ongoing trial and you want to append data without overriding the one that you have already there, or if you loaded data by mistake and you need to change it, you might want to um, change it. So you can use different options and you define these options on the mapping file had line comment. So you can either replace, so this is the default behavior, so you re replace everything that is there, or you can upload, um, so you can update clinical data uh, for patients that already exist or you can append new variables without changing the variables that you have there before. Something that might be also useful, uh, imagine that you want to analyze multiple um, studies together. So you can actually load them as um, one single study. So you, you can use the, the ETL files that you prepare for your individual studies, but you actually replace your study ID in all file, files by a common ID to the files to be, to the, to the studies to be merged. And then you move those files into a shared folder um, and, you and you load that merged study. The only thing that, that you need to do is to remap and rename variables to align your terms and, and variables. And then you can see that in this case, I've loaded three different geo studies that are related to breast cancer as a unique study. And this will allow me to actually um, check all the data together and analyze the data of these three um, different studies together, either to increase my, my number of samples or to compare uh, the results between the different studies. And I did this by keeping my um, previously prepared ETL files and just making these changes that I'm recommending here. So in terms of gene expression data, <clears throat> So gene expression, so microarray data in Transmart is considered a high dimensional data and you can load it by getting your matrix with the normalized gene expression values. So you can get that this for instance directly from GEO in case of a public study or uh, you can get it from your internal data sets. But your files should look something like this where you have your um, sample IDs as different columns and probe IDs as different rows. Then depending on uh, the transformation and pre-processing of your data, you should name your file. So if you have just normalized data, you should name your file as gene expression data underscore R. But if you already perform a log two um, transformation, you should uh, put an L in here. And if you already calculated the z-score, you should add a, a, a z in here. This is important so that when you're using Transmart analysis tools, Transmart knows um, which, which type of pre-processing you used to generate your bo box plots and uh, heat maps. You can find more about HDD normalization and Transmart data loading on the wiki for the Transmart Foundation.
and you should um, follow the standards of, uh, defined by the Transmart Foundation uh, Working Group. But the take-home message um, from, from this group is it's recommended to load uh, high-dimensional data as log2 transformed. And some data specific and experiment specific approaches should be used to deal with zeros and, and negative values so that you can fully um, explore Transmart analytics for high dimensional data. In terms of mapping file for your gene expression data, you should um, use this file to map your sample ID to your subject ID. Um, this file should also list your um, expression platform in here. And um, in here, it will show the, the path of your gene expression data. So you want to load your gene expression data under a folder called biomarker data. Then you are going to use your platform name as a, a subfolder and your tissue type as a lower subfolder, so breast tumor. You can also use attribute one and attribute two to build more complex um, path for your gene expression. So uh, for this case of the GEO study that you were um, curating before, the 25066, you have an example how the mapping file would look like and how we are loading um, into Transmart, how does it look like? So we are using the platform name in here. So the GPL96 is the AFI matrix human genome U133A array. And you're also using the tissue type as the last element of the, um, the path, so breast tumor. Um, in terms of data platform, this is usually required if um, you didn't load this platform before uh, or if it's a custom uh, platform. So it, if it's from GEO, it can actually retrieve the file from, from GEO. In our previous example, if you go to the GEO page, um, here you have the platform listed. You can just download the, this file here. So it lists your, your probes um, and, and your uh, genes. So you can download the, the full table. So once you load the full table, you should put the file together with your gene expression into your ETL folder on your Transmart ETL um, server. But if you need to build a custom platform, you should have um, a similar format. So you should list all your IDs, all your gene symbols. You can have multiple probes, um, mapping to one gene and you should also have your enters gene id so these are the mandatory columns and you have some other optional columns like gene title and species so other considerations that you should um, have uh, in mind when dealing with high dimensional data so you should think what was your normalization method to be able to specify that on your files. Um, you should think how you, if you want to use the attribute one and attribute two to load your data. So if you want to specify multiple nodes to multiple tissues, if you want to analyze them together or separately. Um, you should also check if you have multiple platforms that were used to uh, generate your gene expression data, how you want to load that information, if you want to load as multiple platforms, and they will be in different nodes, but then you cannot um, analyze them together, or if you want to merge uh, so that it enables um, cross-platform analysis. 
um, after loading your data, you should always test um, the loading. And you can do this either by the export feature in Transmart. So basically, you would go into your Transmart instance and you can select your study and you can come here to your data export tab. And you have here the option to, to download um, your microarray data. You should export it and, and see if the output from Transmart looks like your original file, if there was any um, problem with the data once it was loaded, if it looks like what you expect. Alternatively, you can also run some analysis that you are or that you already know what you expect. So you should uh, run some heat maps or box plot box plot to see if there isn't any problem with the data that you loaded. Um, other high dimensional data types, uh, the way you load them, it's very similar. So you can find more information on Wiki uh, and Transmart uh, supports all these data types that are listed here. Please uh, find more specifications on the Transmart Data Loader Wiki. So to uh, load the study metadata, so the study level um, data, and to upload files, this uh, corresponds to the Browse tab on Transmart. And usually, sometimes people get a little bit confused because they loaded um, data using the, the ETL tool, and they can see that data on the Analyze tab. So if we go back, um, we can see our data here on the um, navigation tree, but then once we go to the Browse um, tab, we don't see the study that we just loaded. So sometimes we are confused on how we link the data, so the subject level data that shows up on the Analyze tab and the study level data that shows up on the Browse tab. So for this, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, on the Browse tab, you actually have your studies organized by programs. Um, and for each study, you can associate, so you can annotate using different entities. So the assays, the analysis, the, the folders. And um, within these folders, you can upload multiple files. So these files could be your ETL tool, your ETL um, files could be raw data files, and you use this to make your study level data more rich and to enable the search and browse within Transmart, especially if you start using Transmart as a data repository and you have um, a huge collection of data. Once you have your browse tab populated, you can use um, the, the filters um, to search for relevant data, and you can use also the search box. You can also use free text searching that will highlight terms that you search on on the free text. And if the data is actually available as subject level data on the Analyze tab, you can actually open that uh, study and move straight into the Analyze tab to see your patient level data and to analyze it. So how do you do this? You can do it using the user interface. You would um, create, uh, firstly, a, a new program. That will be the first step. You will define the title, a description, and you can also annotate using multiple tags, such as uh, a program target pathway or phenotype, a therapeutic domain. And once you have this defined, you will save. In this case, we're creating an oncology program. So under oncology, you can add multiple studies. So a study can be, um, a program can contain multiple studies, but one study can only be associated to one program. And the way that you link your um, study level data to your um, subject level data 
is by this box here. So your study identifier, when you're creating a new study on your browse window, should be exactly the same as your study ID from your ETL file. So that first column for you, from your clinical data file. So if you do this, um, it will show that there's subject level data available for this study. Um, you also have some buttons to add uh, new analysis annotations, assays, and create folders to organize your data. So you can see here that you can upload multiple file types and you can organize them, for instance, into raw data, process data, findings, protocols, and so on. Um, once you have those folders, you can upload files and um, this is done easily using the user interface. And if you have the files uploaded and associated into um, in, in your user interface, you can export them and you can also delete them. Uh, you can find some more useful resources and materials on the Transmart Foundation uh, page, and I'll leave all the slides um, available within their page so you can find more information. And also free, uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions. All right, thank you so much, Monica. You're welcome, thank you. Any questions now from the, um, from the attendees today? No? No, I don't think so. All right, and I'll be uh, putting up the slides and the recording from today's session up on the website. Um, sometime this week. Thank you. Have a nice day. You as well.